Welcome to the Smarter Science of Slim, the scientifically proven program where you eat more and exercise less to burn fat and boost health. Eat smarter, exercise smarter, live better. I am so ready for that. Hey everyone, Jonathan Baylor back with another bonus Smarter Science of Slim podcast. And today's guest is giving me a run for my money in terms of vibrancy and amount of time spent smiling, judging by her website and also our pre-chat chat that we had. She is uh, named aptly, and you will see why in a second. But before we get into that, she is a graduate of the Living Light Culinary Arts Institute, and she is a certified raw food nutrition educator who helps people incorporate more fresh food foods into their everyday diet. You've seen her on NBC, the Huffington Post. She does a lot of work with whole foods. She is a joyous, smiley chef who is aptly named Chef Joy Houston. Joy, welcome to the show. Jonathan, thank you so much for having me. Well, Joy, let us start back in the past when we had little smiley joy. Tell us how we went from little smiley joy to today, the whole fresh food advocate, Chef Joy Houston. Well, uh, like so many stories of the adventure through health, uh, mine had a, a sad beginning. Um, I was told that I would not have a child with my current husband, whose name is Travis. And he is just one of those magical, amazing men who was born to be a father. Uh, and after all the struggles for a difficult Irish woman like me to find love, um, I was really gutted, you know, when they said, no kids for you, sorry, you've been trying for two years, you, you pretty much just struck out. You know, they hand you this pamphlet with your options, and, you know, adoption is on that list, all these surgeries are on that list, and it just turned into one of those Charlie Brown moments where the teacher is talking and it's wah, wah, wah. And I looked at that thing and something clicked inside me and just said, no, that no, this can't be right. There has to be a solution and gosh darn it, I'm going to find it. And so I started digging and as the universe would normally do, it laid out a lovely path in front of me uh, by opening a door in a really weird way. Uh, my husband had put something on my iPod about health because he knew I was just reading every health book, everything I could get my hands on. And, he said, baby, I, I heard this thing from Tony Robbins. He's a huge Tony fan. And uh, I think you're going to love it. So not being a huge Tony fan at the time, uh, I thought it was a little bit raw, raw for me. Uh, I listened to it anyway. You know, I figure things land on my doorstep for a reason. I'm going to listen to it. And sure enough, it was the third knock on my thick skull about the concept of alkalizing. And I have this rule in my life, Jonathan, where if a concept or a book or a person is mentioned to me three times and I don't listen, then I am being a fool. <laughs> so, <laughs> because it was strike, it was knock number three. I thought, okay, I'm digging deep into this alkalizing. And uh, luckily for me, Dr. Robert Young is local here in San Diego. And so it was very easy to dive into all of his information and study under him and go to talks and lectures and I dove into alkalizing like a crazy woman and it had amazing, amazing health benefits for me right off the bat. Uh, you know, it didn't, it didn't help with my fertility right away. Uh, but things that I just thought were a part of me, you know, those extra five pounds for me, it was extra five pounds that hang in the thighs. That seems to be something that my family likes to do. The women in my family like to do five pounds on each thigh seems to fit us well. Um, cystic acne, which I had struggled with my entire life. And I thought, oh, it's okay, I just got to deal with it. Those things just melted away while I was trying alkalizing. But the one bummer thing was I have always had a passion for culinary and alkalizing diet is a lot of broccoli and a lot of almonds and a lot of leafy greens and really not much else. And, you know, even things like, you know, high grade balsamic vinegar, which, you know, I had prized myself on my collection and, you know, all these quality oils and eccentric, amazing aged cheeses, all those things did not fit into that protocol. So I started getting really freaking bored. And as luck would have it right about that time, uh, Robert Young had chef Chad Sarno, who you might know, he's the co-author of Chris Carr's book, Crazy Sexy Diet. He's also another ambassador chef for Whole Foods. He's a huge superhero in my world. 
Uh, and when I first learned of him and he was kind enough to share all his information about where he went to school and where he trained and what inspired him, I went down that rabbit hole and I went as quickly as I could. Um, you know, in diving in before I committed to going to the school, before I committed to getting certified in the science of raw food nutrition, I became my own experience of a miracle. Uh, I was on raw food three months when I got pregnant. Mm. And obviously the, the alkalizing had been a big change and the raw foods just really stepped it up to the next level. My body was firing on all cylinders. I felt like I looked younger, felt younger, had more energy. I just felt amazing. Honestly, Jonathan, if someone else would have told me, I would have thought, yo, you're full of it. Like, really, it can't be that simple. You just eat whole foods and, you know, leave them in their pretty much raw form or barely processed and you're going to feel so amazing. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but because I, I experienced it personally, that's when I dove in. And that's when I went to the school and I, I sought out the knowledge to be able to share what I had went through with other people. I wanted the skills and the knowledge to back up my own experience and be able to share it with others. So fast forward now, Maverick is four and a half years old. He's the most amazing boy, healthy, full of light and energy, born at home with a, a doctor and a team of midwives. It was just the most amazing experience. And all that after having been told we would never have kids. So I have a huge gratitude toward raw foods and the power of what they can bring to people's lives just by that experience alone. Joy, sharing your story of nutrition, not only enhancing your life, but enabling you to create new life is nothing short of awe-inspiring. And I'm curious because it takes, it, it, it show, <laughs> it takes this whole idea of feeding one's family and how choices about our nutrition are about much more than just us to a whole nother level. Now in your new role, well, not that new anymore. Maverick is over four years old role as mother eating a whole foods, nutrient dense, unprocessed lifestyle. Oftentimes I'm sure you hear as I do like, Oh, it, it just doesn't work in a family environment or in a busy family life. What have you found there? You know, I think that that is a matter of shifting your priorities to match your values. And that's not always difficult. I mean, that's always easy. It, it, it's difficult with finances. It's difficult with time. It's difficult with energy. Uh, but we all know that it, the more we push our, all of our energy resources towards what we value, the happier we really are. You know, because if I take a lot of shortcuts and I was to go back to the way I used to eat before, before I knew better, uh, I would feel that in my body immediately. And to me, it's just not worth it. And the opportunity to be able to give Maverick and my family, everybody in my family, the opportunity to feel their best and shine the most of their light through in who they are and in their experiences with everyone else every day, you know, that just, that makes me feel like a super mom, Jonathan, you know, it's, every, it's everything I want, you know, people don't realize how, how much of their light of what they have to give is diminished by being on a roller coaster of highs and lows that have to do with sugar and fats and proteins and not having them in the right balance, you know, we don't want to be subject to the ebb and flow of the tide of food. We're, we're subject to the ebb and flow of a lot of other things, but when it comes to food and, and also exercise, I believe, and even our feelings to an extent, I believe we can control those things. You know, it's really easy to control what's on your plate. It's really easy to control whether or not you exercise. You know, your feelings, maybe it's a little bit harder because there's so many other people affecting your thoughts and the way you feel. But when it comes to sitting down to eat, Really, if you only buy the right stuff at the market and that's all you have in your house, it becomes a whole lot easier to take the time to do it. Now, there's two things that I've seen have to be present in order to succeed with a family. You have to carve out time. So at our house, that's Sunday morning and Wednesday evening. So Sunday morning, we get a few things in the fridge that are ready-made and easy, right? So that's when we make a batch of kale chips or a batch of flax crackers or 
you know, we get some pesto ready to rock or maybe a cashew cheese sauce or something where if we come home starving, all we have to do is run a zucchini through one of those cool little veggie spiralizer gadgets and mm -hmm. toss it in the sauce that's ready made or grab a handful of kale chips or get some carrots out of the fridge and dunk them in some raw ranch. And we have the same shortcuts at our house that people who are picking up, you know, cartloads full of junk at Costco have. We have the same shortcuts but we've set ourselves up to succeed by having the right junk food, if you will, the right fast food or quick food on hand in our refrigerator at any given time. And that is the key to our success. Joya, so many things you just said resonated with me. So I'm gonna try to keep this as brief as possible. There's two yes. I really, or two I really wanna highlight. One <laughs> is that this isn't an either or thing. I literally, I cannot, so many people think that eating food means you can't have convenience. Like that's just, it's literally <laughs> just ob like objectively not true. Like Joy can sit here and list out to you like, oh, you like eating potato chips? Okay, well, here's the non-deadly alternative to that. That's just as convenient. Oh, you like eating this? Like that is out there. Please, please don't lose sight of that. Like we can make it work for you. The other thing, Joy, is I so appreciate you using the analogy of your brightest light because we often hear people say that making that shift to eating from eating potato chips to eating kale chips is hard. But <laughs> what I think is not stated there is how hard it is to go around life in darkness. Like think about that literally. If your light is not shining, if your car is stuck in first gear, like how much harder is life every minute of every single day. So if we want to talk about hard versus easy, I actually don't know if we want to have that conversation because it is a heck of a lot easier to go through life when your light is on and you can see where you're going and you can fully engage your environment than it is otherwise. What do you think? You are 100% correct. And there's so many people who are bringing that point to light. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Lisa Rankin, but her Mind Over Medicine book is a good example of that. There's so many great examples of that. You know, I I have this huge belief that I don't know if you're a big power, you know, law of attraction believer, but I certainly am. And I find that the cleaner we eat, the less we are subject to that ebb and flow that I was talking about. And the more we can really have our, our satellite dish, if you will, or you know any of the mirrors that reflect our light, the cleaner those things are, the easier it is for us to simply focus on what it is that we wanna generate in life, what we wanna give, what we're here to offer. It's easier for us to do that efficiently on a clean diet. There's no denying it. There's just no denying it. And, you know, I challenge, you know, anyone in your audience to, to just do it, take it on, you know, take it on for a week, take it on for 21 days, whatever magic number sort of pops into your head, take it on, eat clean, get all the junk out of the way. And all that time that you used to spend, you know, craving sugar or carbs or salt or whatever your sort of guilty pleasures are, every time that pops into your mind, I double dog dare you to focus instead on what it is that you wanna do or bring to this world. And I guarantee you, you'll take huge steps in that 21 days or two weeks, whatever you choose, that you would not have done otherwise. It just simply makes life easier to show up in full force when you're eating a clean diet. And what else is there, Joy? It, <laughs> it's, a, it's a short list that you invest, because let's, let's be clear here, right? You do this, I do this, people who do this uh, lifestyle, many of our listeners, we set aside some time. So you do Sundays and Wednesdays. My wife and I set aside a bunch of time on the weekend as well, not a bunch of time, a few hours to do bulk food preparation. And then it's, we spend less time preparing food throughout the week than I would imagine m most Americans do because we do that preparation on the weekend, but we are spending time on that. But where else can you spend two hours doing something which is not a burden? It's not like you're out in the snow with like hail beating down and you're in your kitchen, you're listening to music, you're with your family that benefits noticeably every single aspect of your physical, spiritual, and emotional health. Like how, how else could you invest that time more wisely? I, I can't think of an answer to that question. It's, 
it's an investment in self, you know, it, it, it becomes, for me, it becomes a meditation, mm. you know, <laughs> it, yeah. it's my time to imbue that food with, you know, everything that my family wants, you know, my daughter has her eye on getting into Humboldt State, you know, I have my eye on bringing my first hard good to market, a superfood coffee replacement. You know, we sort of, all of us, as we're working together, we think about what it is that we want in life. And we think about that food being the fuel to get us there. Mm. And I think there's something really magical about doing that. You know, whether I do it alone, if they're busy, or we do it all together, I just think it adds that extra special sauce that, you know, you might not taste it, but you feel it in your everyday life. And it seems like a great way to honor yourself on a deeper level. I've used this analogy cautiously in the past because I, I hope it doesn't rub people the wrong way. I'll see what you think about this, Joy. But that which we put in our body in any other context, being selective and being intentional is prized and is something that is pretty universally valued because it's, things are going into your body. When we can savor and cherish and value what we're putting into our body many times a day, I think subconsciously that makes us see ourselves differently, see ourselves as valuable and see ourselves as a worthy container. What do you think? I absolutely 100% agree. It, it also connects us to everything else. You know, no matter what your, your spiritual beliefs are or your religious beliefs are, if you have paid for you know, let's say organic kale and all these things that people complain are more expensive than conventional produce. When you sit down to eat that or when you're preparing it and you think about, wow, all the people who, you know, har who harvested the seeds and then germinated them and planted in the ground and cared for them and then who trucked them to the market or the farmer's market where we picked them up and brought them home. If you think about it that way, it really ties you into the whole. And and for me, that's important. You know, we have this idea of, you know, there's me, what I need to accomplish, there's what you need to accomplish, and we're all so separate, and we're busy, 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 and we march along aside one another, but not together. You know, eating is one of those things that I believe not only empowers us as individuals, but it also is a great reminder that we are all connected. We are connected to the earth that grows our food, to the people who, who bring it to us. It's just a great reminder. You know, it's fueling us, but it's part of the whole. Joy, I could wax philosophical here with you all day, <laughs> literally, because we are absolutely on the same wavelength. But I want to spend the rest of the interview, if you don't mind, because you are a chef. How? What are some of the the your favorite ways, and you found with your with your clients, the people you work with, to incorporate like the most bang for your buck? So you you don't you can't do this all the way. Let's say at least not yet. What are what are three things you can start with? Well, I think that it should be customized for the individual. So I think the answer to that question is, um, is to, to say to yourself, what are the three things that I really love eating? Like I get a lot of enjoyments out of them, but I realize that they might not be uh, in my highest and best good. They might not be of the most service to me. Right. So let's say that cheese is your number one and maybe uh, candy or sweets is your number two. And maybe, Fried chicken is your number three, right? So we would just want to take baby steps toward each one of those things, right? Mm. So we wouldn't say we're going to take you if you're addicted to sweets and you love sweets, you're not going to go from a Snickers bar to raw brownies. <laughs> you know, I, I would just ask you to take baby steps and say, hey, why don't you try like an organic uh, maybe just try the dark chocolate that doesn't have so much cream. And I like people to just great sort of create a gradient. Mm. So they're not saying good, bad. They're saying, you know, what's the spectrum and how far down that spectrum and am I willing to go? Because if we push people past what their willingness is, there becomes resentment and they're eating the food, but they hate it. And they're, you know, even, even me, when I counsel people one-on-one, -on -one, I'm like, Hey, if you find yourself saying, Oh, that joy, she's such a witch. I wish I could just have this. <laughs> then, you know, you're on the wrong path. You've gone too far. Right? So I, I ask people to look at their top three foods that they would like to reduce or change or upgrade as I like to call it and take a baby step in the right direction. 
you know, now some people are just type A extremists and, you know, those are the people who, who often tend to yo-yo diet too. So I try to caution them and say, I know, even if your type A self says, no way, I'm going from deep fried, uh, you know, breaded fried potato chips over here to raw kale chips. Um, that's great, but I would definitely encourage those people to do a journal to make sure that they're venting about everything and making sure <laughs> to get it out. Uh, because if you don't, then it'll come back and you'll be back on those breaded fried potato chips in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so take what you need to do, your top three things that you feel you need to change, and take small steps to continue to upgrade, right? So maybe you go from fried chips to baked chips. Okay, now I'm ready to try some really cheesy kale chips. And then I end up over here with a simple kale chip in the dehydrator, tossing a little olive oil and sea salt before you know it. I'm just eating a snack that's full of fiber, that's nutrient dense, that's hugely beneficial for my body. Whereas, you know, a month ago I was eating potato chips. And if you're not familiar, potato chips, when you fry a potato, it forms a toxin called acrylamide. Um, that's very tightly regulated in the EU, but not as much here, unfortunately. And you would be going from eating a toxin covered potato chip to eating a nutrient dense superfood that can, you know, <laughs> lower cholesterol, increase your, you know, your bowel movements is really help you out in all these ways. And that's one small change. And the awesome thing is once you've gotten through that list of three things and you've elevated them, your body will automatically start wanting more change. You know, just like eating bad food is a spiral that goes downward and downward and compiles extra weight and extra health problems. The spiral goes both ways. That's not a one-way ticket. It's a spiral that goes around and around either direction, really bad south and, and feeling awful. And it also can elevate you as high as you're willing to go. It is so amazing and encouraging, Joy, to know and, and to see. And there is so much hard science just backing up the fact that if, if any listener out there feels that their body is fighting them, to, to keep them at a heavier weight or a subpar level of health, as strong as you feel your body is working against you now, if you give it the right inputs, it can and will, and it's been proven, work that hard to push you in the other direction, just like Joy is saying, and that is something to be excited about, I think. I think so too. And if you feel like your body is trapped, if you feel like you are in a state of addiction around food, uh, you know, that's a time to really do something, uh, you know, to draw a line in the sand and decide to clean your slate. Give yourself a tabula rosa, if you will, and just get all the carbs and sugar and, and unhealthy fats out and give yourself a clean slate and then add back foods one at a time so you can see, you can create your diet, not my diet, not Jonathan's diet, not the diet of the week, according to the New York Times bestseller list, but your diet, right? And, and that's when you really take your health into your own hands is when you get off everything that's kind of junky for a little bit of time, and then you add back in based on your own body's responses to things. I think that's really where the power of things like cleansing and temporary diets, that's where those things can be really, really useful. From there on out, it just has to become a lifestyle. Joy, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant words. What's next for you on this journey? What's next for me on a journey? I am doing a six-week program called Rock and Body Revolution, and it is an exploration in the power of eating for attraction. And I'm not talking about attracting the next lame guy or, or gal, <laughs> one. I'm talking about really amplifying and cleaning up your powers of, tra of attraction by getting off foods that don't serve you and getting on foods that absolutely fuel your highest self. Uh, and I'm doing that for two reasons. Uh, one, because it's a really personal connection for me. I only take 20 people through that course at a time. And uh, we coach individually, one-on-one -on -one together every week. And we also meet as a group. Um, using Google Chat every week. And so it really uplifts me to do that. And I'm doing that as a precursor for my new book, Eating for Attraction. Uh, and that's really to get more input and more life stories. Uh, I do this once a year. Um, and it's really one of my, my favorite things that I do because of the connection that is, that is offered 
uh, both between, you know, I give of myself to that group and they give of me. I always end up learning just as much from that group as they learn from me. So it's one of my favorite things that I do. And there is information about that at deliciousrevolution.com if that's something that you or your audience is interested in. Joy, I love it. And speaking of learning more, as you mentioned, listeners, if you want to learn more about the delightful woman we've been chatting with today, Chef Joy Houston, you can do so at deliciousrevolution.com. Again, that's deliciousrevolution.com. And Joy, I know it's not out yet, but remind us of the name of the book so that we can keep an eye out for it when it does come out. Eating for Attraction. Love it. Love it. Love it. Joy, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Listeners, I hope you enjoyed this delightful conversation as much as I did. And please remember, this week and every week after, eat smarter, exercise smarter, let your light shine, and live better. Chat with you soon. Wait, wait, don't stop listening yet. You can get fabulous food same recipes over at carrybrown.com. And don't forget your 100% free eating and exercise quick start program, as well as free, fun, daily tips delivered right into your inbox at baylorgroup.com. That's B-A-I-L-O-R group.com.